proof. It is better to prove one's claim, right? Sometimes it's mandatory. For instance, in mathematical research, a piece of work is not considered valid until it has been proved. In this field, a set of hints, experiments and analogies is not considered as a valid proof. Instead, one has to follow a formalism dating from the ancient Greeks, the axiomatic method. This method, considerably developed at the beginning of the 20th century, when a unification was set up based on set theory. It reached such an extent that almost all researchers in mathematics now use a common mathematical language and that all their results forms a corpus that any other can reuse. This corpus is like a gigantic intellectual construction. In the axiomatic method, a small number of evident or unprovable facts and principles are assumed valid. They are called axioms. The entirety of other facts has to be logically deduced from them. These facts are expressed in a normalized way called propositions that are, for practical purposes, condensed using precise symbols and rules. Proofs themselves must follow precise rules and use chains of deductions from other propositions. We will represent this with a simplified model that, even though it is not faithful, will be efficient in illustrating a couple of points. Propositions will be represented as dots and deductions as arrows. An example of simplification made in this model is that often several propositions must be used to prove a new one. Let us use red dots to represent axioms, green dots for propositions whose veracity has been elucidated, and black dots for those whose status is unknown at a point in time. When a proposition gets proven or disproved, we turn the dot into green. There is another way in which our model fails to be faithful. If a statement A implies B and A is proven false, then this does not imply that B is false. In this illustration, Consider we prove that if A is true, then B is true. If we later prove that A is false, then we note that the statement A is true does not hold. The former implication is then useless to determine the status of B. But I want you to forget about the inaccuracies and see the set of axioms in red at the origin or the center of a vast network of solved propositions in green, among an infinite universe of unknown facts in black. We will use this mental picture to illustrate two aspects of mathematical research. First, very often, when a new question is resolved, this does not close the subject, but instead reveals new problems that seem interesting or natural are in reach in the light of the newly acquired knowledge. But if most questions suggest several others, the knowledge in the mathematical science grows exponentially fast with the distance to the set of axioms. Maybe the universe of mathematical problems that people explore is a bit like that. I also find this mental picture instructing when it comes to specialization which is unavoidable since mathematical knowledge has grown so big. I will let you think about that. The second thing I want to illustrate is the moment of illumination when someone or a community finally solves a long-standing problem. On the left, we represented the bulk of solved questions. The circle black dot is the objective say, a conjecture stated by a famous colleague and that has remained open for 20 years. The natural approach would be to start from the left and prove gradually intermediate results in the direction of the objective. 
Another approach is to reduce the objective to statements that are simpler or closer to the knowledge base. One can also focus on key propositions situated in between, that have then to be linked both to the proved ones and to the objective. Gradually, a map of implications emerges and possible paths reveal themselves. And one day, someone proves a last implication that completes the job. Suddenly, not only the objective, but the whole set of statements is resolved. It is a particular case of a percolation model. From the nature of the process, this last stepping stone gets considerable attention. And it definitely makes sense if the research was a community venture. But if a big part of the program is the undertaking of a single individual, there is the risk of putting too much emphasis in this particular phase and too little in other steps. Usually, someone who achieved this final step would always remember every detail of the day when this special moment took place. What the weather was like, where he or she was at that precise moment, who they were with, an emotional twist may make them overlook interesting parts of their own research, like hubs or IDs that can be reused, etc. When presenting their work to other fellows, they would probably spend half an hour on this specific point, even if it is an easy point that they had missed until the very end. Another individual would have taken another path, or even the same path, but laying the steps in a different order. The final step would be another one, and this other person would put the emphasis on the latter. After all, this is still a human process. Though imperfect, I think these graph, tree and percolation model analogies are instructive, and I hope that you like them. Thanks for listening.